This is Take 20 with Maddie and Kenzie Ziegler, an iHeartRadio podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Take 20. Um, If you watched part one, we actually did a segment with Allison Malman, um, who started Active Minds, and we're here for part two to kind of ask more questions just because we are extremely... um, we feel really strongly about mental health and, and learning more about it and educating ourselves. And so that's why we have Allison here again. And thank you so much for coming back. We really appreciate all of your knowledge and everything that you've given us. Um, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm well, thank you. And I really, um, I'm glad to be back. And um, I just can't tell you how important this conversation is that mm-hmm. you guys are both hosting and being open about and all of it. So I'm just really glad to be a part of it with you. Oh, thank, thank you for you. teaching us. We're excited about it. it. It's tricky. It's tricky stepping into a new year, trying to have a new mindset and not trying to put pressure on this year's going to be better, whether it be just because of the pandemic or whether it be because of your mental health or a friendship or whatever it may be. Um, how should we try and approach the new year without putting too much pressure on the situation? Yeah, I was, I was talking to somebody about this this weekend. Um, Resolute New Year's resolutions end up becoming like the biggest downfall of for so many people, totally. whether or not they say it or not. I think a really important part of the new year is to recognize that, um, you know, January 1st is the day after December 31st. And that's all. Give yourself the chance to set some goals for yourself, because yeah. I think we all feel um, if, if we're working towards a goal, whether that goal is related to your grades or related to a friendship or just like, I want to get like 200 extra steps a day, whatever it is, let yourself set a goal. Um, but recognize that you can also, and should also set a goal on March 1st and maybe like July 15th, just because, and, um, the fact that it is the new year, um, don't put that pressure on yourself to make things so different this year that Mm -hmm. then you, you, you may be let down. Yeah, for sure. I know it's, it's hard to like, kind of not put pressure on yourself or, on the situation, just like even the new year's resolution thing, how you said, it's really just a day different, you know, it's like really not that serious, but people are like, Oh my gosh, it's the new year. I better get into shape. I better do this. And it's just like, it's, it's a lot. It's It's a a lot lot of stress for sure. And I think with that, um, it's not healthy for us to hold in our feelings. So why is talking about the things we're going through and facing them important? Why do you, why do you think it's important for us to yeah. talk through it? I think one of the things um, that I have seen and I even learned myself is the moment I started talking about what I was going through, I realized just how not alone I was. Mm. So, so often we're in our head thinking about the things that feel like they make us different or that there's something wrong with us or um, why does everybody have this perfect life when I don't? And the moment I started vocalizing it and verbalizing it or sharing the hard thing that had happened in my life, I realized just how many other people were going through that exact same thing in that exact same Mm. moment and how comforting it was to know. And so first and foremost, you deserve to share about what you're going through because you deserve to know that you're not, you're not alone and you deserve to know that you're, it's, not your fault. Uh, and that like, you're not weird, right? Like you're totally yeah. normal going through what you're going through. And then secondly, it is just such a burden off of your shoulders, when you don't have to carry that because yeah. usually what we're keeping on the inside is the really hard stuff, right? When something good's happening, we're screaming it off rooftop and letting everybody know and letting everybody celebrate with us. But it's the really hard stuff that we're holding yeah. on in the inside that they can then just create so much more pain inside of us. And so, and again, I don't like, yeah, scream it off the rooftop if you feel comfortable with it, or just like find one person that you can share it with. Maybe it starts with writing it down in a diary um, Mm -hmm. or putting it on social, or hopefully having somebody that you can talk to about it so that they can 
physically show you that they're support, that they are supportive and they're there for you. And we can, you know, going back to some of the stuff we talked about last session and, you know, VAR and showing support for each other um, is a really important piece, but um, it's hard to do, right? Like, I'm not going to sit here and say, everybody like, just use those words. <laughs> we've never been taught to do it. It's yeah. just not been part of our upbringing because yeah. for generations, we've not talked about how we're feeling. But one of the coolest things is that I see is that um, high school students of today and college students and young adults are talking about their feelings and are talking about mental health in a way that even my generation didn't. And yeah. certainly my parents and grandparents' generation didn't either. And so I, it's changing, right? And it's changing because you're starting this conversation yeah. and having this public conversation that we're having here today is going to hopefully help some people who are listening just start talking in their family or in their friend group and then realize, oh, there's other family or friends who are going to start talking to, and it becomes a snowball. So that's the third reason, which is um, not, you know, not necessarily for your own mental health, but you will be helping somebody else mm -hmm, right. when you share about what you're going through, yeah, because absolutely. when you're sharing and you feel like you're, you know, being really vulnerable, you have no idea what that other person is going through. Maybe that other person is going through the exact same thing and thought that they were alone and did not feel comfortable sharing it. Right. So it's a really important piece, but starts with this one conversation. The, the few words that you're comfortable saying can really help kind of explode a conversation to both help you and the people around you. Totally. Totally. And I, I just want to say thank you for even just kind of opening the conversation because you are helping so many people around the world and it's really special. I just wanted to acknowledge that. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Now kind of steering away. Um, <laughs> this is, I feel like as a whole, mental health is pretty like taboo or people make it such a thing. Um, but on the other side of that, are there any like words or phrases that you should steer clear from if you're talking about mental health or if you're talking about anxiety or whatever it may be? Oh, I love that question. Language is like a really important part of right. um, why I do what I do. So um, in short, like you really can't say like the wrong thing. So I, I again, I want to go back to something that we I, we talked about last time don't be afraid you're going to say the wrong thing and not say anything at all. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're better off saying something. Mm -hmm. However, if you're aware enough to be thinking about these words, um, there are a couple of words that both in terms of like talking to somebody who's struggling and then in general around mental health that I think is really important. What you want to do if somebody's sharing that they're struggling is you want to validate. You don't want to say, um, just get better, just go for a run. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't believe you. Like, what do you have to feel sad about? Mm -hmm. Um, validate their feeling, even if you don't believe they deserve that feel that way. Like, I, I don't, I don't know why you would feel that way, but regardless of how you feel, right. um, know that whatever they're feeling is real and right and, and mm -hmm. validate it and let them know that you believe them. I think there's also some pieces as we talk about mental health and mental illness that we can do to kind of shift how we think about these things in our culture. So, um, you know, I started Active Minds because my brother died by suicide and um, he was a college student when he took his life and I was a college student myself. And I started really thinking about what life was like for him and the world that he was living in. Mm -hmm. And even from that beginning and saying that he died by suicide, I'm never going to say that he committed suicide. Because if I say that Brian committed suicide, that's that's indicating that he like committed a crime or like right. he did something wrong, like burglary or perjury or like something that's going to send him in jail. No, he died by suicide because he was struggling with his mental health. Right. And for him, that was the only way out. And so we, as you know, in our, in our vernacular, in our language, like we need to stop saying that people commit suicide. Totally. We don't say that about any other death. People don't commit heart attacks or commit cancer. Right. I mean, you wouldn't even imagine to think about that, but, but it helps you frame just how differently we think about yeah. mental health versus all other health issues. When right. you think about just that one set of language, I think a really important piece too, as we think about it personally, is that, um, we, we have to stop identifying ourselves with our diagnoses. So, mm -hmm. um, I have a friend who had anorexia in college and, um, the number of times I heard her say, I'm an anorexic, or I heard people say, well, she's an anorexic or she's anorexic. It's very different from 
she's a person with anorexia. Totally. Right? Like my brother was a person who struggled with his mental health, mm -hmm. but he was a brother. He was a friend. He was a son, all of those things. Yeah. He had depression and he had schizoaffective disorder, but it's a really important part. When we think about ourselves, mm -hmm. if you're somebody who has panic attacks or, um, has anxiety, you're not somebody who like is anxious. No, like you're a person that's just like happens to be a part of you. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think about it often, like I have, you know, this isn't real, but I have blonde hair. Right. And so the difference between saying I'm a blonde versus I have blonde hair, there's like a very different connotation totally. of what that means. Right. And so there are little shifts that we can make as we think about it, even for ourselves about I'm a person, I have these things. I might struggle with these things sometimes, but I, there's so much more to me than just my diagnosis or just my struggles. Um, I think it's a really important way for us to get out of um, the, the self stigma right. that still really exists. Even if we're not, we don't judge each other. One of the things that has been so awesome to see in your generation in high school and college students of today is that there's not a lot of stigma. There's not a lot of judging mm -hmm. of people to say like, oh, that person has bipolar disorder. I don't want to be around them. No, like that doesn't exist anymore. But what still is really high is this self-stigma, the, the, um, the discomfort in having it for yourself. And so if you can make some of those language changes, even for just for yourself to realize, like, actually I'm a pretty awesome person. And yes, I have anxiety or I like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool. And my mom has, um, you know, substance use disorder or whatever it may be. Um, this is just part of your whole identity and not, not your identity itself. For so those sure. are little changes. I could go on forever, um, but I love the question. And I think there's a lot of power in, in looking at the language that we're using. For so, sure. Yeah, I, I would have, that's such a amazing perspective that I haven't even, I, you know, noticed myself. I, th I think we do that. We're guilty of always just being like, oh, well, my, I'm just anxious and it's getting in the way of a lot of things. Um, that's a really good way to treat it. And yeah. really those beneficial. changes are also very important as well. Yeah. And and there's so little, right? Yeah. I think that's the really, like the really important piece of all of this to me is that we don't have to make these like massive changes. Mm -hmm. It's all of these little things, these little language changes, the little opportunity to say something to a friend that creates the big change right. that's, that's needed, but it's, it starts with these little things that are so easy for all of us to do. Of course. It's really hard. I, I think like I, for myself, I, feel like I was kind of the last in the family out of my mom and sister to kind of start having panic attacks and yeah. having uh something some anxiety and it was nice to know that I wasn't alone because I witnessed my mom go through it and then I witnessed my sister go through it and so I felt like I had an open space luckily I'm so lucky that I had the space to do that um but I wonder for you Kenzie or if you can touch on this like what was it like going through it before your sister did and knowing like, like, did you feel alone or did you feel like you could open up? Um, well, I am not one to talk about my feelings a lot. So it definitely was super hard for me to kind of experience it first in the family and not really have someone to relate to other than my mom. I mean, obviously I love my mom, but teenagers don't necessarily go to their parents for everything. Um, so I did go to my sister a lot about it. But I was so nervous to open up. Um, it was the same thing with a therapist for me. I just don't. I feel so weird talking about my feelings, which sucks because it's important. But yeah, I'm just like, I feel so weird talking about yeah. it. But you've been a great person to talk to. And I feel like for me, the most important thing going through a panic attack is just to act like it's not there and, and kind of distract your mind if we watch a movie or talk about something else. But once in a while, it is really important to talk about it for me yeah. as well. No, you've definitely done an incredible job at like progressing in that way. And I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just so lucky that I've had her through all of this and especially just cause we obviously like friends come and go, but we'll always be there for each other right and that's not me saying that you shouldn't address it in any way oh, no, I think no, no, no. we all just kind of deal with it differently no. but now I've learned to open up about it because obviously when I started having anxiety I was like 12 so it was very hard <laughs> right. 
Well, and, and you've touched on something too, is like, it, you don't have to be perfect every time, right? right? Like you can do one time you can like, you put words to it and, and feel comfortable doing it. And then the next time you don't want to talk about it all. I'm like, that's okay. Like right. give yourself grace to not, <laughs> not be getting better each time or not, you know, to not be perfect each time. Like it's your, we're, none of us is perfect. Right. And so it's like, um, do the best you can in the moment that you're in right. all, all the time. And sometimes, um, you're going backwards and like, that's fine. Like, welcome to this pandemic. We thought we were going great. And then we went backwards. Like that's just a natural oh, really. part of life that we allow for everybody else and everything else, but we don't allow for ourselves. Mm, of course. So like give yourself some space and some grace to, yeah. to not be perfect each time, even if it's not being perfect in your panic attack, like yeah. that's totally normal and that's totally <laughs> fine. And you know, it's probably going to happen again. And so like, you know, you know, figure out what the triggers are and the things that you can mm. say, you feel comfortable saying, and you do your best in the moment when, with what you've got. And that's a really important piece of all of this. Like we all have to just be kinder to ourselves of course. In, totally. in a way that we're just not. I also think, you know, how we were talking about social media is terrible, but I think <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a little, there's like tiny but, moments that are good. Um, this the app TikTok I feel like has been a way for teenagers to open up about how they're feeling about mental health and I feel like I go on there and I'm like wow I'm not alone like this is so important and that's why I'm I'm so glad that people are opening up on social media and I think it's very important because in the comments everyone's like wow I'm so glad that you're going through this and we can go through this together I just think it's really important to open up on social media. I think it's totally. I know it's a scary thing to do, but on, it's it's weird because on TikTok it feels like less scary, right? For some reason, I love that. I do think I, you know, I yes, we were talking about all the the downfalls of social, <laughs> but I like I'm the first person to jump into an argument to say that like not um, there is good in social, right? And totally. and what I've seen is social gives people an opportunity to have a platform to share how they're doing and what they're thinking in a way that previous generations never had, mm -hmm. right? Like my generation, we, we wrote in journals. If you were going to do anything, you were going to write in your diary, but nobody was ever going to see that. So if you were having a really crappy time, yes, you could get it out, but unless you used your words to tell somebody or a friend said something to you, nobody knew. Social gives all of us a chance to put that out in the world mm -hmm. and be validated and feel like we're not alone in a way that didn't exist in previous generations. So while there, there are challenges, right. And we're going to work through all those challenges. Um, it, I, I love what you were saying. It like, um, it gives you a chance to like, you know, you find your tribe and you find your people and maybe your people live in your hometown and likely they don't. And likely you're never going to interact with these people again, but they make, you know, that, other people go through this too. And, and it's totally normal. Um, and it's okay to not be okay sometimes. And it's okay to like, feel like you just want to know that, that you belong somewhere. Totally. Of course. I, I think that's like the best advice, just honestly going into this new year as well as it's okay not to be okay. There's no pressure. Like it's, it's really important to know that, especially everyone listening. Like I would say everyone give, give yourselves a little, a little pat on the back because it's hard and we're all going through it and we're all going to get through it. We're all going to get through it. It's true. And this, and this time right now, um, get through day to day. Like yeah. th this is a really, not only is being a teenager hard and not only is being a young adult hard, but like going through it in this pandemic, when sometimes you're allowed to see people and oftentimes you have to be stuck at home and you're not allowed to participate in the activities you once did, or maybe you can, but you're sick, all of those things. Like this is really hard. So let yourself just get through day by day because we will get through it. Um, we don't need to thrive right now. We don't need to like be our best selves right now. We just need to be, and um, let's, let's get out on the other side and, and, you know, wear our red, yellow, and green bracelets when we get there and like figure out how we feel like it's not going to be a hundred percent, you know, at once, but um, it's, this is a hard time and it's, and it's okay to feel that um, it's normal to feel that. And just like, just get through like a you know foot forward e each day so that we can move, move through together. Totally. That's yeah, that's great. Thank you so much, Allison, um, for doing this so two welcome. part series with us. This means so much to us yes. and just opening the conversation and to anyone listening. I hope, you know, you took something from Allison and this conversation and it's been really special to have you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. It was so nice Here. to meet you and talk to you.
you guys as well. And, and again, I just um, thank you for including me and thank you for including Active Minds, but more than anything, just thank you for having this conversation because it does, it opens up for folks who may be hearing it for the first time. And, and as you guys continue to share your experiences, you're helping other people know that they're not alone. And hopefully those people can let other people know. And like, that's how this change is happening. And, and we're going to, we are going to get through this together because of conversations mm. like this. Oh, thank same. you so thank much. Thank you. Thanks so much for taking 20 with us. If you had fun, please give us five stars. You can follow us on Instagram at take 20 podcast, email us at take 20 at iheartradio.com, or you can call us at 844 or take 20. See you next time. Bye. I hope you guys like this video and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button down below. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this and let me know in the comments below what else you would like to see. I hope you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.